This video is on rational numbers on a number line. As always, please make sure you have your graphic organizer with you and ready to go. Let's go through some vocabulary first. A rational number is any number that can be shown as the quotient of two integers. Basically, a rational number is anything you can get as an answer when you do a division problem. So the example is a divided by b is a divided by b. So rational numbers can be written in different ways, uh, such as decimal or fraction form. We've done both in class, where you could write your answer from a division problem as a decimal, and we've also done it as a fraction. Uh, negative 4 over 3 and negative 1 and a half, those are both examples of some rational numbers. Today we're going to work on comparing rational numbers. Uh, it helps if we use a number line to help see which is larger and which is smaller. And it might be easier if both formats are the same. For example, it would be easier if we changed the fraction negative 4 thirds to a decimal to make it easier to compare it to negative 1 and a half. So if you're trying to compare fractions to decimals, it would be easier to change them into the same format first. Let's talk about changing fractions into decimals. To change a fraction to a decimal, you divide the numerator by the denominator. So in this case, excuse me, just a minute, there we go. We're going to take 4 and we're going to divide it by 3. Now we'll worry about the negative symbol when we get to the final answer. 3 goes into 4 one time, subtract, and you get a 1. But as we've talked about, you can always add a decimal and two zeros, and it won't change the value of the 4. We could bring that 0 straight down. Decimal goes up on the roof. 3 goes into 10 three times, which is 9, subtract, bring down the other 0. 3 goes into 10 three times, 9, subtract, and I'm sure by now you have figured out the pattern. So the way we would write that is 1 and 33 hundredths, and then you write the little line above it showing that that's going to be repeating over and over and over. Now at this time we bring the negative symbol back in. So our final answer is negative 1 and 33 hundredths repeating. Now that we're going to, now that both rational numbers are in the same format, we're going to use the number line to compare them. Now, for our example here, I just left it as negative 1 and 33 hundredths. Now, if you look on our number line, negative 1 and 33 hundredths is probably going to be very, very close to the negative 1 sign. And negative 1 and a half is also very close, but it's a little further to the left. Now, as we talked the other day, as you move to the left, the numbers get worth less value. So on the number line, we can actually tell that negative 1 and 33 hundredths is going to be larger or worth more value than negative 1 and a half. Let's graph each of these rational numbers on our number line. Uh, negative 1 fourth, negative 4 tenths, 1 and 3 tenths, and 1 and 1 fifth. Now, as we discussed earlier, it would be a lot easier if they were all in the same format. So what we're probably going to do first is change our fractions and our mixed numbers into decimals. So I'm going to slide up here at the very top and I'm going to take my 1 divided by 4. Now one won't, 4 won't go into 1, but of course I can put my decimal in two zeros. Now 4 will go into 10 two times and then 4 will go into 25 times. So negative 1 fourth is actually the same as negative 25 hundredths. Now 1 and 1 fifth, well the 1 isn't a problem, but we are going to need to change that 1 fifth into a decimal. So we're going to take 1 divided by 5. Again, we could put a decimal point zeros. 5 goes into 10 two times. Subtract, bring down the 0. And in this case, our answer is going to be 1 and then the 20 hundredths. So if we were to mark these on our number line, negative 25 hundredths, that's not very far. It's not all the way to negative 1 yet. So the negative 25 hundredths is probably going to go right about here. So let's draw a line so that we know that's that one. Negative 4 tenths, that's like negative 40 cents. 
that's really close to the negative 2,500, so I don't know if I can even get how close they are in this number line, but I'll try right about there. But it is worth less than negative 2,500 because it is farther to the left. So let's draw a line up there. Then we have 1 and 3 tenths. Now it's positive and it's past the 1, so it's going to probably go right about there. And then we have 1 in 20 hundredths, which is actually smaller, so it's a little bit closer. So it's right there. So if you can see, those numbers are extremely close together. Now let's use this number line to see if we can compare the rational numbers using the number line. Negative 1 fourth, we decided, was negative 25 hundredths from the last screen. And then we have negative 4 tenths. Well, we decided that negative 4 tenths was past it on the number line. I think we did it. There was negative 25 hundredths, <clears throat> excuse me, and there's the negative 4 tenths approximately. So, negative 25 hundredths is actually worth greater value than the negative 4 tenths. Then we have the 1 and 3 tenths, which is approximately right about here, and then we had 1 and I believe that was 20 hundredths, which is right here. 1 and 3 tenths is greater because it's farther to the right on the number line. Now let's see if we can compare these rational numbers using our number line. And of course we've got a mixture of fractions and decimals. First thing we need to do is to change these to the same format. Now as I'm looking at the negative 11 twelfths and the negative 1 and a half, Yes, we could change that fraction to a decimal. We could take 11 divided by 12. But I'm also looking at that negative 1 and a half. Negative 1 and a half. Couldn't we change that very easily to negative 1 and a half? So in this case, the same format would be easiest if we change them both to fractions. Now, negative 11 twelfths is going to be smaller than negative 1 and a half. Negative one and a half is farther to the left. So in this case, since they're both negative, negative 11 twelfths is going to be greater. Negative one and a half is farther to the left on the number line. Then we have one and six tenths, and then we have five fourths. Now in this case, five and four are pretty easily divisible. So I'm going to go ahead and change them both over to decimals. So we have five divided by four. Goes in here, subtract. Of course, I can add those decimals and it's not going to change anything. 4 goes into 10 two times. Bring down, 4 goes into 20. So, we have 1 in 6 tenths and 1 in 25 hundredths. Now, they're both positive, so in this case, 1 in 6 tenths is worth a greater value because 1 in 25 hundredths is farther to the left. Then we have 1 and 5 fourths. Well, 5 fourths, we just learned, was 1 and 25 hundredths. If you were going to compare 1 and 1 and 25 hundredths, 1 and 25 hundredths is going to be greater than 1. Now what we're going to do is we're going to practice writing rational numbers in order from least to greatest. Now we have two fractions in our first example, 4 fifths with 9 tenths and then 5 eighths. Now, if we change those all over to fractions, to put them in order from least to greatest, they're going to have to have the same denominator. That might be kind of tricky, because right now we have 5 as a denominator, 8 as a denominator, and if we wrote 9 tenths out as a denominator, it would have a, uh, excuse me, 9 tenths as a fraction, it would have a denominator of 10. Then we'd have to go and change all the denominators. In actuality, it might be easiest to change them all over to decimals. So I'm going to come up here to this little work area. I'm going to take my numerator divided by my denominator. And in this case, that was quite easy. It's just simply 8 tenths. Now we're going to take 5 divided by 8. And 8 goes into 56 times, which is 48. 8 goes into 22 times, which is 16 and then bring another zero down. So this is 0.625. Now if we were to write these in order, I think we all agree that the 0.625 thousandths would be smaller. 
then the 8 tenths, then the 9 tenths. So that would be putting those in order from least to greatest. Our next example is 61 hundredths, 5 tenths, and 2 thirds. Once again, it might be easy if, if we change them all over to decimals. So let's go over here and we're going to take our 2 divided by 3. 3 goes into 26 times, which is 18. Subtract, bring down. See where we're going with this? We're going to get it repeating again. So we could just write 66 hundredths repeating. There we go. Now we have them all in decimal form. And if you look at those, which one's worth the least amount of value? Well, hopefully you said the 5 tenths, then the 61 hundredths, then the 66 hundredths. All right. Uh, please make sure that you write all these down, and we will go over it in class again. But if you have any questions, make note of them so that you can ask me for help. The magical word for today is snow day.